Hello Beam professionals, has it ever taken you hours or even days to export your Revit models to different file formats like RVT, NWC or IFC? Well, I'm sure we are all familiar with that very repetitive task. That's exactly why we create RV Bat Transmit to automate this export process on any number of Revit files to help you get back your valuable time for much more important things. Let me show you now how it works. Firstly, if you haven't got RV Bat Transmit open already, simply go to Revit, go to Edits, and run it from the RV Boost panel. If you don't see this button, then you haven't got it installed. Simply go down to this video description and follow the link there to get your free copy of this plugin. Now, coming to the user interface, there are two main sections here. You have here the first half of the window for adding files, removing them, and this all-important button here to start exporting them to different file formats. The lower half of the window is where you can set your export settings. That can be either collapsed or expanded like this. To begin, let's add in here some files. I can go now to Add Files to List. And for today, let's go with the first three files here. Click on them like this and do open. As you can see, there's a small warning here about work shared files. If your file is work shared, you need to copy them to a temporary location first because the central file will be recreated during this process. So make sure you do that to avoid disrupting other people still working on the central model. In here, I have done this already. So let's do OK. As you can see, we have now the file names and the file paths. You can add files from different locations. So even here, if I want to add more files, I can just go back to here and maybe choose the other two files below and add them to the same list, just like this. If you made a mistake, simply select some files here that you don't want and click this button here to remove them from the list. So that's step one done, nice and easy. For step number two, we need to actually configure how we want our files to be exported. So let's go down here. We have three sections here, RVT, NWC, and IFC export settings. Let's see the Revit one first. At the top level, you can choose to include a Revit export or not. If I untick this box here, the plugin will not produce RVT files from these models. Only NWC and IFC will be exported. If I want to exclude any other file formats, I can also do that from here as well or from there. For now, let's go back and re-enable RVT export. The next step, very important as well, is to choose where we want the add-in to save exported files. I can simply do that by going down here to output folder. And if I'm not happy with this default location, I can simply choose browse and then select a different folder on my computer or network. Let's select C and then Revit and then output. To confirm this selection, I can do select folder and a new file path is now there. We can of course do the same for NWC and IFC as well, but usually it's easier to just select one location from here and tick the box to say use the same folder for also new NWC and IFC files. So if I now select this box there, when I go to the second tab, it's the same folder path and for IFC as well, the same thing is there. So we're good to move on. The next thing you may want to specify is the prefix and suffix to the file names. If you don't require this, we can move on to specify how the Revit file should be saved. You can set the number of backups. You can choose to compact the files or disable work sets and so on. Anyway, what we found to be the most useful is this panel here on the right. This is where you can specify the model cleaning routine that will be applied to all of those files on your list before they are exported to RVT. For example, if I now tick this box like this, that means the file will be purged and used three times before the export happens. And the same for any other options here. I can choose to remove unplaced rooms, unplaced areas, 2D elements that are hidden in views, even non-primary design options, or even things that are less obvious like unused view templates or unused view filters. If you don't want something to happen on your files, such as this one, maybe you don't want to remove elements on invisible work sets. In that case, simply untick the box to exclude this cleaning rule from the process. Similarly, if I go now to clean views, 
I can also choose to remove all views except from some views I can specify from here. So maybe I want to keep views on sheets or maybe I want to keep only my 3D views or if I want to, I can also define in here names of views that shouldn't be deleted. For example, coordination view. If I have a view like that in the files, I can do this and that view will be kept for me. Press OK to confirm. Other options like deleting temporary views by their names, you can also select down below. There are also ways you can do to fix your links. If I now go to clean links, we can choose to remove private links remove cat links and so on. Even for worksets, we can make the plugin put all Revit links on a common workset or individual worksets or do nothing. Same for cat files. If your team hasn't done it, you can choose from here to move cat files to a new cat files workset. There are also a few more useful methods under others. For example, pin Revit links and datum elements or get notified if the exported file is bigger than a certain file size. If I want to be notified if it's more than 500 megabytes, I can just do that. Also, if these files should have the same project base point and survey point coordinates, I can choose from here a file where the point coordinates check should be based on. If I now select building A, I will be notified if building B or the structure file here have different coordinates for the survey and project base points. If I go on and select open options, these are the ways that you can choose to minimize disruption during the batch processing of the export. For example, to open your Revit files here quicker, you can choose to exclude loading Revit links and cat links because usually these are not required in the exported RVT anyway. So it's good to not load them just so the whole process can finish quicker. Similarly, as you may expect, sometimes there'll be warnings and errors that come up when you open Revit files. If I want to dismiss all the warnings automatically, I can now tick on this box and there's a warning there, but if I do OK, any of those warnings that can come up during the process will be suppressed for me. That means I don't have to stay by my computer just in case there's a warning message coming up and I have to click OK. We can also select to dismiss errors automatically, but be cautious with this because errors may change your files in unwanted ways. But let's say you just want to export the 3D geometry for maybe the coordination process or for building the federated model, then it's okay to dismiss errors like invalid dimension references because we won't need them anyway. Okay, there are more options to see and test out, but all of them is built with the intention of making the export process as smooth as possible. Moving on, we can specify NWC export settings. Let's change to the second tab now. And you can see on the left there are familiar settings we saw before from the Revit tab. But more importantly here, you can specify a view that the exporter will use. For example, you have a view setup that hide all of the unwanted elements in the NWC. You can name the view here and that view will be used during the export. On the right hand side, we have the familiar NWC export setting that we usually see in Revit itself. And they function the same way as they do in Revit. For example, whether to convert parameters, what to do with coordinates, whether to export the view we name here or the entire model, and so on. Similar things on the IFC tab, if I go there now, you can see in addition to file folder and file names, we can also name the view that can be used for adjusting what elements to be exported. And also on the right hand side, the familiar IFC export settings are all there. If you have been using them in Revit, it will be the same information to define here as well. Things like level of detail or advanced settings. Entirely up to you to customize. Now, once you have defined all the settings you need, it's time to do the export. Let me open the output folder so you can monitor this process. So, that's the same folder there. See Revit and then Output, the same folder we selected from before. Let's now click Export and see the tool in action. Here we go, the process is complete. As you can see, we supplied three files. We set them to export to three file formats and that's why we have now 
nine files in different format just like we need the other folders and text files here feel free to delete them except from this failure file there this is where RV bad transmit has saved information about any errors or warnings that came up during the process if I now open this file here the only thing I can see is the file names so in this case all is good the plugin encounters no errors and no warnings if there were any they'll be listed below each file so you can see which one that you should go back and check and maybe re-export after you have fixed the errors another place where you can see this log file is right here in the plugin you can see here the full records of what was done to your model so if I now go up to the top firstly the plugin opened this model here it cleaned up the views cleaned up the models cleaned up the links delete any obsolete items purge and used and then of course export to Revit Navisworks and IFC files everything here was then repeated for file number 2 building B and then file number 3 structure I can also click on this button here open output folder if I didn't have that already I can click here now and it should open the same folder where the files have been saved also if I don't know which file to open to see the warnings and errors report I can go back to the plugin click on view locked errors and that will open for me the same log file from before with that done I can do OK now and go back to RV bad transmit to show you one last thing this is more like a tip because we know if you are someone issuing files like this chances are you won't be doing this just once for example every two weeks or every month you will need to export the same set of files to the same set of file formats with this in mind we have added these two handy buttons the first one is for exporting your settings to a file that you can reuse so if I do this I can choose where to save the settings that I have used in this session we can do it of course to the same output folder but feel free to save it anywhere else for now I will just name this one maybe by quickly export and then save it when I go back to the output folder it has been saved there let's test it out if I now remove those files and then mess up a few settings just so I can restore them later so now it's a bit different from before if I now close the plugin wait two more weeks now it's time to do the same export again I can go back to edits run RV bad transmit one more time now instead of rebuilding the file list and redefining all of the settings below I can just easily go to here and choose import settings select the one I saved from before and open it as you can see it has already recreated the file list for me from the same file paths and when I go down to the settings area everything that I used before has been restored so now all I need to do is click on export again and consider the whole task done so if you want to save time with RV bad transmit like we have simply go down to the video description and get your completely free copy of the plugin using the link there for now enjoy automating probably the most mundane and repetitive task of the beam management process and i'll see you in the next video